Hey guys, Kevy Kev here. Time to refill that prescription for those red pills. Yesterday, there was a shooting in Texas in a church where Devin Patrick Kelly, age 26, went into this church and shot dozens of people, killing the pastor of the church's young daughter, which is so heartbreaking, and shooting his son several times. Guys, this was horrible. Vegas was horrible. All these mass shootings are horrible. But let's talk about the reality. This was the third church shooting this year, this summer. The last church shooting was a black nationalist who entered a church in Tennessee and shot several people. The media did everything they could to bury that story. Now, I want you guys to compare that to Dylan Roof several years ago. Dylan Roof, the day after that shooting, we knew everything about him. See, the media... They can investigate into these things. The media knows how to investigate. They know how to dig up dirt. Dylan Roof, we saw his profiles, his Facebook, his Twitter, everything he had ever posted was out there. Now, compare that to the Tennessee church shooter. Compare that to this Devin P. Kelly. The media is covering these things up. And why? Because it doesn't fit their narrative. Or at least it doesn't fit the agenda they want to push. In fact, most mass shootings do not fit the media narrative. When you look at the numbers on mass shootings, when the media comes out at the end of each year and says, oh, there was 350 mass shootings this year, what they're not telling you is that mass shootings happen every day. In fact, statistically and by definition, a mass shooting is just a shooting where three or more people are shot. Those kind of shootings happen every day in Chicago, in Los Angeles, in New Orleans, in Detroit, but the media, it doesn't fit their narrative. And they don't care because they are the racists. They do not care. They only want to report on the shootings that back their agenda and that they think they can sell as a talking point. So, I'm here to tell you today, I investigated this guy as much as I could. They've already started deleting snapshots from his Twitter, deleting photos from his Facebook, okay? Stuff that was out there last night is now not showing up on Google this morning. But I did scour the web so I could get you guys the truth on what we know so far. Now there's a rumor out there that this guy was an Antifa member. That he wanted to start a civil war by attacking white churches and Republican gatherings. He, that so far we cannot tell is true or not. But I will tell you what we know about him. Okay, what is actually out there on his Facebook, on his socials, and what the media has reported on. So, he's a 26-year-old man who is dishonorably discharged from the U.S. Air Force. He's married. He was dishonorably discharged for domestic abuse. And that's very important because the media is now immediately going to the gun-grabbing stuff. They're trying to say that this guy went out and bought this gun and just because he had a gun, he was able to go shoot a bunch of people and we need to ban all guns. And yes, he had an AR-15 rifle and, and an AR-15 rifle is no different than any other hunting rifle that is semi-automatic. You can buy a bigger stock for a Mini-14. You can buy a bigger stock for a Browning automatic rifle. There's lots of rifles out there you can buy large magazines for that are just normal rifles. You can buy a five round magazine for an AR-15. But that aside, let's talk about what's important. He was dishonorably discharged from the military, which means he could not buy a gun legally. In this country, you cannot buy a gun if you have a dishonorable discharge from the military. Now, I want you to take that information and toss it out the window because it doesn't matter. The fact is, is that he was arrested for domestic abuse. And if you have been arrested for domestic abuse, you cannot buy a gun or hold a concealed carry license in the United States of America. So, he had two reasons he could not buy a gun legally. So that any gun-grabbing measure the media wants to push on you is illegitimate. It's bogus. It would not have worked just like it would not have worked for any of these other shooters. And it wouldn't work for those many, many mass shootings that I talked about earlier that are happening in Detroit or Chicago because most of those mass shootings are happening with illegally acquired firearms. Now, in his Facebook, he had a photo of his AR as his background, 
His profile picture was him and his child, and we should leave his children out of it, leave his family out of it. His quote on Facebook is, I do not fear death. I was dead for billions of years before I was born. And that's sitting right under his profile picture, and that's from Mark Twain. Now, lots of people put stupid quotes under their profile picture on Facebook. Let's face it, you know, everything from Socrates to stupid people like Justin Timberlake. People put their quotes on Facebook. This is only ominous once you look at what happened yesterday. Then talking about he doesn't fear death as he died in a ditch yesterday, that's very telling. Um, like I say, a picture of his rifle. His likes were uh, Glock, which is a firearm company, uh, gun stores, and atheism. And then he also liked a group called uh, Together We Change. And it uh, sounds like a left-wing group, and somebody said that it is. But there's also a foster care group with that same name. So we, we'll see what that turns out to be. Now, in his other profiles, LinkedIn and Twitter, there, it's a little more telling. There were some posts about the election. There was a post with an Antifa flag. Um, and, and there was no other commentary underneath that. They cut it out. But you can see just a post on his profile of an Antifa flag. But they don't show what uh, context that was posted in. So take that as you will. We'll see how that develops too. But in his profile, he stated that the causes he cares about are arts, culture, civil rights, social actions, the environment, and human rights. And those are great things. And I think we all care about those things. We all enjoy arts. We all enjoy cultures. But when you post that on your profile, it sounds pretentious. So most of us do not post that out there because it sounds like virtue signaling from a leftist. So take that as you will. But I know as a right-wing person and as somebody who used to be on the left, I can tell you that the old me would have loved to post that. The new me, yeah, you know, the more informed, better educated, older, wiser me would never post that kind of stuff on my profile. But he was a young kid, so, you know, take that as you will. Now, that's all we know about him so far. That said, we should know a lot more. The media is complicit. They are covering these things up. They are encouraging violence, and, and they've they've covered for leftist violence in the past. We see with Antifa, the media was out there giving them a pass, telling them they were fighting the good fight. Now, I want you to think about that and take this into consideration. Recently, on November 4th, we had marches around the country that were supposed to be the start of a revolution against Trump. They wanted to gather as many people as they could so they could overthrow our sitting president. That was their stated plan in their website, in Refuse Fascism's ad, in the New York Times. They spent millions of dollars on this. Meanwhile, you have the media constantly calling Trump a Nazi and a fascist. Now, you take somebody who has a bad background, rough history like this kid had, being kicked out the army, who's violent, domestic abuse, we know he's violent, and, and you tell him that he's fighting a good fight by killing people on the right or make him think that the media will make him a martyr for going out and assassinating a bunch of people who are conservatives, or if nothing else, cover for him. You know, this is violence. This is what causes violence. We see people encouraging violence, and we've seen the people from Antifa beating people with no consequence, throwing water and pee at people, doing all these horrible acts against people who were just there to express their patriotism or, or the defense of free speech. You see this in the past, and it's being ramped up slowly. But as it ratchets it up, of course we're going to start seeing more extreme acts of violence. And could this be one of them? Yes, it could. Do we know that is so far? No. But would we know if the media was a little more honest, if Google and companies like that weren't out there removing this guy's total social media history, and that's something we need to start talking about. You know, after these events, we as the public have a right to know the motives. And, and it seems like after Vegas, especially with the weird stuff that's surrounding the whole Vegas thing, we just can't trust the media to do their job to dig up dirt and uncover things. And when you compare and contrast that to what happened with Dylan Roof 
or any of these other people that fit their narrative, it's a stark contrast and we should demand equal reporting on things that matter and we should demand that our media is held accountable for these things. And I'll get back with more information as it breaks and I'll let you guys know where things go from here.